welcome to Poznan in Poland for the ICF Canoe Polo World Championships. After hosting a World Cup Canoe Sprint event in May and the Euro Football Championships in June, the beautiful, historic University City of Poznan welcomes the best canoe players on the planet for a festival of highly skilled, adrenaline-packed action. The game first played in Scotland in the 1880s as its World Championships every two years and after Milan in 2010, the Malta Regatta course takes over the responsibilities for 2012. But just in case you're not familiar with the rules, before we start the action here, a quick recap of the essentials of the game. Uh, canoe polo is a mixture of um, five-a-side football, basketball, water polo, where two teams of five compete on a pitch that's 35 metres long, 23 metres wide. And the important bit for somebody watching is the last six metres at each end, because then there can be uh, significant contact between the boats an attacking player can move a defender half a metre with sustained contact, break that contact and then do the same again. So the last six metres are really competitive. In the centre of the field, they should not be touching each other as much, but as you've seen, it can get really aggressive, but um, aggressive and safe. There can be lots of aggression, fantastic entertainment, but no injuries, it's great. Two metres into the air, uh, they're one and a half metres wide, one metre high, and uh, quite amazing the way the goalkeepers manage to stop it with their blades. So yes, yeah, it's, it's a blade above their head, the ball's coming in at crazy speeds, and uh, yeah, you would imagine that they would never stop it, but some are, the, the skills are amazing. Uh, boats are three metres long, um, Kevlar, carbon, various um, constructions are used. Uh, we introduced integrated bumpers a couple of years ago, uh, which has changed uh, the style of the boat. They're built into the front and looks much better for spectators. Face guards are needed. There used to be too many serious injuries. Not deliberate, but a paddle sometimes hitting a face. And, uh, and probably the big difference with polo and some of the disciplines is the thickness of the paddles needs to be wide enough that if somebody is chopped on the hand, it doesn't cause an injury. It's two halves of 10 minutes with a three minute half time, which we feel is good for television, an advert break, etc., etc. And um, we're trying to promote it in that style. 10 minutes is really hard work. And now for games that there is a, res a result needed, uh, is golden goal. So five minute se sets of golden goal. It's been asked by some countries for many years and a really big decision for the International Federation to change it. Um, we were concerned that we would lose a lot of tactics, uh, like basketball or some sports that the, the attractive things for spectators is sometimes the pressing or five out game. And we were concerned with 60 seconds that would disappear. Uh, it's not. It did for the first few months with people thinking, oh, it's just uh, attack, defend, attack, defend. Uh, that's, that's gone now, the, the coaches are becoming more adventurous again and as with Australia, Switzerland yesterday, there was a full pressing game for, for quite a lot. The bonus is that uh, it gets reset, so if a team fouls, there's another 60 seconds, so it's, it's good. And the score lines have, have really gone up, um, so spectators are much more involved, as you can hear from the noise here. World Games is uh, the pin regarded as the pinnacle at the moment. Uh, top six men and women's teams uh, go to the World Games every four years. So next year is in Cal Cali in Colombia. Uh, that will be the third time which makes canoe polo a core sport in that multi-sport event. Um, we would obviously like to be in the Olympics. The reality is the number of accreditation places it's unlikely. But as with the X Games and sponsors, Canoe polo can become enormous and I, the media is definitely, definitely, like you, paying more attention and it's different. The dy dynamic atmosphere and uh, the actual attrition between the players, you don't get that in other canoe disciplines. So. so now, on to the action. The fans are out in force to cheer on their compatriots. The first match we're going to watch today is the final of the women's under-21s with France taking on Germany. France, by the way, the reigning world champions. There's certainly no holding back. 
as they all get stuck into this early action. France letting the ball doing the work. A quick one, two. Long shot, and that's 1-0 to France after five minutes of play from Cécile Ringbach. But the Germans still in high spirits as they set up the next attack. Passing the ball around, they move up the pitch. That's four players involved in this move. Left-handed German number two, Lena Bartels, levels the score, one all. 10 minutes of play gone, it's the half-time break. The girls gather around the coach, catch their breath as well, of course, rehydrating. Still all to play for, the second half begins. Players, of course, have changed ends. It's a frantic battle, who's going to be the first to get the ball? It's Svenja Shapo, takes possession. French, they have time to regroup and set up the defense as the German launch another attack. An acceleration. Two quick passes. And Judith Gerber takes possession, fires the ball into the back of the net. Germany take the lead after 11 minutes of play. The Germans are really starting to take control of the match. Look to set up another well-worked move. Throwing the ball around, creating space. They just need to make sure they remember to shoot within 60 seconds of taking possession. It's another goal for Germany. Angie Koenig, close range. That's 3-1 after 16 minutes. Four minutes left on the clock. The French determined to show what they can do. Slow build up. The ball's travelling in the right direction. That's France back in the game. Julie Roux fires home and challenged from 12 metres out. Coming towards the end of the game. Careful, it looks like the French have put all their eggs into one basket. No one in the goal. The Germans clear. Must be a formality. Svenja Schaper won't score an easier goal than that. Germany four, France two. The clock counts down. It's all over. Germany have beaten France and take the gold medal in the women's under 21 final. The Germans remain unbeaten throughout the whole tournament. And now onto the men's under-21 final, with France taking on Great Britain. And after this match, there'll be a new world champion as Great Britain put out the reigning champions, Germany, in the semi-finals. And they're off. France wearing blue, Great Britain in red. False start from the Brits. France take possession and immediately start throwing the ball around. Great Britain have packed the defence. It's not going to be easy to penetrate. <laughs> After eight rapid passes, GB take possession. It's a slow build up, passing the ball around and looking for space. The 35 by 23 meter pitch, plenty of space for the five players to look about and see what the options are. Great space. GB, Pete Neal, first to mark. That's 1-0 to Great Britain after just eight minutes of play. The action stays with Great Britain as the ball's dribbled up the right-hand side. Switches across, clever move. That's Ross Montgomery, 2-0 to Great Britain from three metres out after nine minutes. And that seems to have silenced the French crowd. Approaching half time, the French throwing the ball around. Remember, they've only got 60 seconds before they have a shot. It's all a bit messy in there. The 
but Christoph Bellert takes control, finds space, fires home. And France are back in the match. Half time, Great Britain two, France one. The game's still wide open. Back to the action. Whoop, there's a bit of a push, a bit of a dramatic theatre play, but he gets up and he's okay. Simple but effective, the ball passed around the pitch by the French. Space is fine, five metres out, and a goal for France with delighted David Linair. The score is 2 2. Great Britain in possession. A clever pass from number one, Jack Robinson. Space found the shot goes in, but it's saved on the line. Possession back to the French. You'll have to get back quickly, Brits. Great Britain defence being stretched to the limit. And too far. Matthew Delet, Branch taking the lead for the first time in the match. That's 3 2. Another turnover, some careless Great Britain play. The French steal the ball, another quick attack. Sprint up the line, simple pass, and a two handed push of the ball into the back of the net. That's Camille Richer. France, three goals in three minutes to take control of the match. The French crowd are making themselves heard. They always roar when the team are winning. It's 4-2 now, but it's not over yet. Great Britain break the line. And there's a goal, Peter Neal. Goalkeeper had no chance. Goal in the 19th minute, it's too late. France win. A very excited Frank Besson and his colleagues celebrate the under 21 victory. Great Britain take the silver. And with the sun shining over the Malta Regatta course, you can see the finishing tower in the background, which is used, by the way, for the canoe sprint races. And here we go. Whenever there's a gathering of New Zealand men, an occasion to perform the hacker, a spectacle is always guaranteed. And the ladies of the Australian team seem to appreciate the display. Here we have the bronze medal match between New Zealand and Australia. And just to make the match more interesting, both sides have decided to play in virtually identical kit. The ball, if it crosses the line, it's a goal. The referees have said yes. Eliza Enting Hawk scores for Australia after eight minutes. Can New Zealand recover and show what they're made of? The approach to Australia goal with some clever dribbling. Although perhaps a pass might have been a better option. The Australians take possession of the ball, some muscly play. The Australians setting themselves up again for a very quick breakaway. Finally reaching the hands of Rebecca Jennings, number seven for Australia. Buries the ball in the back of the net and that's 2-0 to Australia after eight minutes of play. Ten minutes gone and ten minutes to go. Time to take stock and refresh. New Zealand fans a little bit more subdued than a few minutes ago. The second half flies past, no further goals. And at the end of some fierce competition, Australia win the match and take the bronze medal. And even the coach decides to take a dip and join the celebrations. As a team, we've always wanted to walk away and say, have something to demonstrate to show the hard work that we've put in to get to this point. And we are so happy to walk away with a bronze medal. This is the best Australia has done in over 10 years. So we are over the moon, absolutely. <laughs> Back to the men. And Australia will take on France as the players warm up before the action starts for the senior bronze medal match. The referee will throw the ball into the middle of the pitch. The fastest canoe then will paddle like Billier to get the ball first. 
Rob Sims, number one for Australia, completely fearless, keeps hold of the ball. Now that's devotion to the team. Australia happy to throw the ball around, waiting for the right opportunity. Remember, they only have 60 seconds before they have to shoot or they lose possession. Bit of a sprint into the six meter zone. And that's Matt Moore, number three, sneaks a goal in the first minute for Australia. Australians are back on the attack. Putting relentless pressure on the French defence. So they throw everything forward. Excellent French defending here. A costly error. The French steal the ball. It's as easy as that, 25 metres out. Patrice Bellat for France. One all, and the French fans are loving every moment of this. More quick thinking from the French. Defending the ball well. Spread the play to the other side. The French making it look ridiculously easy. Thomas Brento. Number one from France, French leading 2-1 as the half-time approaches. <laughs> half-time break, three minutes. Just to go back to basics. Five players on the pitch at any one time. Substitutions made when you like from behind the goal line. Second half started the same way as it finished. The French dominating the early play. <laughs> Vivian Thaby switches hands for burying the ball in the back of the Australian net. France lead 3-1. The French finally starting to share the hours of practice gives rewards. The ball's quickly passed around the team. The inevitable shot, and Thomas Brentu scores his second goal of the game. France now leading by four goals to one, with only two minutes remaining on the clock. In all sports, the Australians are known for their never-say-die attitude. Let's see what they can do with two minutes to go. They have possession of the ball. That's sloppy defending. That's a goal for Josh Holmes, number seven for Australia. The score is now 4-2 with a minute to go. Another mistake. That's the second goal for Josh Holmes. Really going to be proving too late for Australia. France win the match. Four goals to three. Not ecstatic, because to be fair, they did want the gold medal. The team have refound their timing. And when they have their timing, the play seems easy and we score goals. We don't concentrate to the things too complicated. Sunny weather, a big noisy crowd and some of the world's top players in action. Now it's time to enjoy the final of the women's gold medal match between Germany and Great Britain. Great Britain, the reigning world champions, having won in Milan two years ago. As the eight players line up before the match, there we go. A frantic start with Great Britain determined to show who their boss is as they take early possession. There's a mistake. Germany steals the ball, quickly passed upfield. Alexander Bonk from Germany, number two, able to catch the ball before throwing it two-handed into the net. Germany take the early lead in the first minute. Again, another mistake from Great Britain. Quick thing from the goalkeeper. Some very fast paddling, very clever play from Germany. Alina Giles sprints up. 
by herself, 2-0 to Germany after two early breakaways. At last, finally the Brits are showing some spirit. They win back the ball, a clever backhanded pass. They've broken down the German defence. It's a clever catch and throw from Zoe Anthony. Germany leading two goals to one. But a few seconds later, it's Germany gaining possession. Dangerous position. They're just proving too strong for the Brits. Stephanie Esser, number seven for Germany. Germany lead 3-1. And we've just had three goals in the last two minutes. It doesn't get much more exciting than this. Half-time break, a bit of refueling. Also a chance to listen to the wise words of the coach. The Germans loving every moment of it. The second half starts. That's a steal for the Germans. A bit messy. Get your canoe off my canoe, please. Now look at this. A roll, keeps the ball in the hand. Shoots, thank you very much. Goal for Germany. Caroline Sinsel. Germany leading 4-1. Unfortunately, the end of the suspense. A resounding 4-1 victory for the German team who take the gold medal. Great Britain taking the silver and Australia the bronze. Yeah, it just feels great in front of this uh, area of all the people that came over from Germany. Just great, and great to win here. It's never easy in the semi-final, but I really like to, to see how the team worked out. And um, yeah, the result was pretty good for us. The last final of the day, the men's gold medal match between Germany and the Netherlands. Netherlands, by the way, twice won the World Championships before 2004-2008. Another frantic start. Oh, there's a bit of a push. But he manages to get up. And the Dutch retained possession. Now starting to throw the ball around. Remember, they just have 60 seconds to shoot. Dutch number seven, Juren Halligraaf calling the shots. Takes possession. No messing there. One nil for the Netherlands. It's always the same with the Dutch Orange Army. They follow the national teams wherever they are on the globe. The Germans now preparing to throw the ball around while looking for an opening. All five Germans are on the attack. Got to shoot soon. Thank you very much. Lucas Richer wrestles himself free and fires an unstoppable shot home from close range. That's 1 1 after four minutes of play. More close range stuff. Damage with the right hand, shoots with the left. Jerome Dibbening for Netherlands. Some wise words to motivate the team. Ten minutes of action to go. Will you get the silver? Will you get the gold? Battle's going from end and end. 
here we see the action. Just seven minutes left, it's now three all. And now with the tension mounting, it was four all at full time, a golden goal. Whoever scores first will win the gold medal. Dutch have the advantage. Jerome Dibbening scores the third goal for himself. Netherlands win 5-4. That's some serious celebrating. The Netherlands win the gold medal. Goal, goal, it's of course the uh, best way of winning. It's uh, ending it with uh, in uh, ultimate climax. Perfect. And now time to celebrate. The Women's World Champions of Germany, Silver to Great Britain with Australia taking the bronze medal. And for the men, France take the bronze, Germany take the silver, but the winner of the gold medal is the Netherlands. So that's it from Posner for the 2012 ICF Canoe World Championships.